And I, every time I hear a new Bond track, I'm always thinking, why isn't it Muse? <laughs> every time. I'm, I don't mind Billie Eilish. It's not generally the music I listen to, but I like No Time to Die. This is fun because we've been recording. <laughs> oh, this is the intro. This is the skit. <laughs> Happy 50th birthday! Happy 50th birthday to Openly Beta. This is... This is the 50th episode of the Sandbox Podcast. We have nothing planned. There is nothing special about the 50th, which is really sad. I should have filmed a skit atop Ben Nevis. Yeah, maybe. (laughs) We should be... We need to be more proactive with this podcast, I think. We need to be more proactive with our lives in general. I mean, I am. Get a crib. (laughs) <laughs> I'm joking. Uh, we, no, we, we, it's 50. It's episode 50 of Sandbox. It's, 50. it's been a wild ride. As we said last week, we're, we're, we're back. And this is going to be this, this sliding scale of quality you're going to see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's going to be exponential. So for this one's uh, extra budget, we've got two big, big knockouts for you. Yeah. We've got a fun, fun background. Yeah. And beer. Beer is back. Also, uh, um, we're going to just quickly now have a 50 minute long montage of our best bits from Openly <laughs> Beta Sandbox. Please don't go, we're not. One minute from each episode. <laughs> what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the beer first. And yeah. it's a very appropriate beer that I went for today. Uh, we're having Innocent Garn Lager. It is crafted in Scotland. It is Scottish. We went to the tap room the question is, uh, a few weeks ago. Will this just be completely. Uh, edited out into the background no it won't it shouldn't be yeah oh, there you go you can see it yeah you can see it innocent gun lager innocent beer. Gun. so scottish yeah so this this is we, we've had this at the source um source <laughs> and innocent gun have a really really fun tap room in edinburgh it's really i don't nice. know if they must they probably have others across the uk yeah but i'm sure they do the one in edinburgh is the big boy because they're from edinburgh they've been there multiple times and it's really pleasant uh yeah so um what how many points do you give it for the t- oh for the t- uh it's a solid t- it's about normal i give it a nine um, t- i don't know how big innocent gun is as a brewery that's another thing that I might, I should probably start doing at the beginning of these podcasts because it could be quite interesting just to researching talk about. the breweries themselves. Yeah, this was a very last minute purchase, but maybe if we do it more in advance, we can like get a little bit more into the the beer side. Yeah, of it, we can start doing that more, which would be quite fun. Look forward to that, people. I'd like to do that. Innocent Gun is a really delicious beer. It's probably my favourite lager currently. Is it actually? Mm. Hmm. Just because I really love it and it's new and different to me. There's a fly in my face. It's fine. Also, I haven't really, I haven't drunk lager in like a long time, other Fair. than really standard cheap lager that I buy because it's cheap. I usually just drink ale, partly because of you introducing me to ale. I've got to say, mm-hmm. um, I mean the design of the can is beautiful. Yeah, I, for, I, charm. for me, that that tastes quite ordinary. Yeah. Um, there's nothing about that which makes me go, oh yeah, this is different from your standard mainstream. I mean, in fairness, they're quite a big brewery from what I can tell. I mean, they, they're interesting. I think they are mainstream. The they are probably mainstream. I mean, for me, but that's kind they, of what I like about it. But they make a big deal out saying it's craft brewed hmm. and they talk about it having oats in it. So you yeah. think you're in for something different. Yeah. I'm, I'm not convinced I'd be able to tell if I had oats in it. Maybe if we had it in a glass... We might be able to tell. Shall I go and get some glasses? Yeah, go on. Shall I actually? Well, yeah. Let's do it. Yeah, go on. Be right back, people. A bit of ASMR. That's what our viewers have come to expect from Openly Beta. This fly will not leave me alone. This, the, the unfortunate thing is, the mic is not sensitive enough to pick up that noise. It's really sad. We always try to go for a bit of ASMR, but it doesn't mm. really work that well. It's a nice colour, in fairness. Get some... A bit of louder ASMR going. And <laughs> then... <laughs> Gonna make some mouth sounds now. That is so disgusting. Um, That's gonna be clipping as well. Right, we've got some good pause going here, ladies and gentlemen. 
I wasn't expecting this to actually fit in this glass. I'm quite impressed. It's because we just down half of it. We just not down half of it. Drink responsibly. We would, we drink very responsibly on this podcast. We do drink very responsibly in Openly Beta. That is uh, a very nice colour, very golden. Very bubbly. Look at that. Look at how many bubbles. I've got ten. I have many bubbles. I mean, they just carbonate it. It's not... It's, I mean, they might not. There, are, You can, you can if you pressurise the fermenter, mm. you can get bubbles in it forcibly, like you would do in a champagne bottle. That's what they do. But they probably don't do that. They do. Just ask Innis himself. Mm. Yeah, it's fine. I don't dislike it. <laughs> it's just fine. It's very it's clean. Fine. I mean, it's a very clean lager. Like, if mm. I had that... This is the sort of thing that I'm, you'd have it, like, you know... Uh, you're going to see a band and it that they'd have this on tap and it's like perfectly drinkable it's something i can drink a lot of i have to say at this temperature mm. it's perfect for me mm. i wouldn't it was very gassy yeah i wouldn't want it to be too much colder i don't really like it when it's ice cold we talked about this the other day yeah jamie likes warm beer no for lager you denim clad butts for lager you don't want it to be warm but i don't like it to be f- ice cold which they have at so many bars and i have that i'm like ooh. Yeah. This is kind of good for me. That's fair. Mm. That's beer. So, that's beer. Um, does that have any information about the hops? Maybe. It probably doesn't. I would also like to apologise if my eyes are red for our viewers. <laughs> I just uh, spontaneously started crying tears of pain due to Jamie's frittata, I imagine. I was chopping onions... And I cooked them for a very, very long time. They, they were quite stewed. And then 40 minutes later, I burst into flames. I think they were spring onions. Maybe. Because they weren't cooked as much, I, deliberately. I like that crunch. You were just trying to take me out. Ooh, frittata. So, let's talk first. The first thing on our list. Episode 50 celebration. Cheers. Cheers to 50 episodes and to at least one more. Uh, so, bit of news on the gaming front. Yeah, uh, I haven't got any movie news. Oh, well, we guess we have a little bit. You can do that later. Um, the uh, Battlefield twenty forty two. Yeah, has been delayed until November nineteenth. You're really October struggling 22nd. with the bubbles. I'm just burping away. Jack's really struggling with the bubbles. Um, audio listeners. I'm just trying not to burp too loudly into the mic. So, uh, it's interesting. It gives me cyberpunk vibes. Whenever a Dev is like, oh, yeah, they said, oh, due to COVID and complications from that, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. We're having to delay the game by one month. Yeah. That does not strike me as a length. That's that's not, oh, due to COVID, this is bad. If it was due to COVID, it'd be like delayed by like four or five months, six months, whatever. Yeah. That just screams to me like they still want to get the Christmas day. Yeah. And they're now scrambling to make it so that it's not so bad it's going to be like cyberpunk like, potentially good enough yeah i mean it's like that's like a matter of a week's delay like that's that's not much that's like a bit of qa testing it's maybe i guess desperate last minute bug fixes yeah yeah which there, there was a leaked um beta yeah they did a a lot of people got to play the game mm. you know paid public QA testing yeah. stream to their computer type thing someone captured it mm. they put, we're, we're talking like an hour of footage is is that the, the crazy thing is I it's on YouTube still like it's been mm. up there for weeks that's a substantial leak it, it really is yeah and it was not amazing mm. like it was quite this, this is this is from like a month ago I think mm. there was it was clearly unfinished that there were textures just quite blatantly missing like yeah it wasn't like oh that's just what it looks like they've obviously it was unfinished yeah um by design <laughs> yeah yeah but that's kind of worrying to have that i don't know obviously i'm not a game developer i don't know maybe not it depends how much what extent it was i mean if it was yes. and if it was just textures if it was like animations voice lines and stuff maybe a bit more but if it is just textures missing yeah and they've still got a few months to go it's not like too surprising. No, it was a game that people mm. were playing, and it looked fine, looked fun. Yeah, I haven't mm. seen this leak, so I can't really comment. They, I'm, I'm shocked that they are still up because that they, is really surprising. It's also at 
30 fps again by design the stream was 30 fps yeah you want to have your your game at the highest possible quality when you first show it off mm. like they've basically shown they've shown very little like they've shown like yeah. oh they have like this, this whole specialist system Mm. And they showed a few of the specialists off. We're talking like like less than five minutes worth of footage. Mm. Very, very much like canned scenarios. It wasn't real gameplay as such. Yeah. It was real gameplay, but staged stuff. Scripted. You know, yeah, yeah, scripted, yeah. that's what I mean. Yeah. So, yeah, a bit worrying. I It works for me because I've got, I've got so much... I mean, I've already got way too much game in October as it is. Yeah got New World to play, and then Metroid Dread comes out early October. Yeah. I don't need any more distractions when I've got, like, three assignments due. Yeah. So, yeah, that works for me. That's near your birthday. But then November... A little birthday present for you. We've got Pokemon, Shin Megami Tensei, mm. and now Battlefield. Yeah. I don't think I'm going to have all three of those games. Pretty stacked month. Yeah. I'm not interested in Battlefield, to be honest. Mm. So... You know, it doesn't I, affect my November massively. I was excited, and I'm just not anymore. Yeah. I think it's not the game that I wanted it to be, from what I can tell. Fair. Um, I kind of... The, the whole premise initially was... Um, I think it's uh, like it's crazy numbers, like 60 mm. v 60 um, games, massive maps. Yeah. Uh, crucially, obviously, not Battle Royale. Like a uh, mag. Like mag. Remember like that mag. game? Yeah. It was like Mag, but what fully realised. strange time in our lives was Mag. Mag was pretty ahead of its time. Yeah. Yeah. It was a really cool concept. Yeah. And it seemed to just immediately fade into obscurity. Yeah. So really weird. weird. So weird. And then no one else tried it. Yeah. I remember having a conversation with my friend on the bus, and he mm. was like, you seriously need to play Mag. Yeah. I had and, the same and, thing. Yeah. Yeah, my, like, my, my best friend back in the day loved yeah. a bit of Mag. Yeah. Yeah, don't know why. Don't know why that didn't take off more. Well, I guess I know why because it's hard to do. Yes, but this 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 kind of was like they got gotten rid of the campaign. Mm. They're all in. It's still a fifty pound game, but these are all these are for. If it wasn't for EA, yeah, in my head that's a recipe that that's like exactly what I want. Yeah, I don't want it to be free to play. Yeah. I want to pay for it, and I want to have it multiplayer only, massive battles. That is what I've wanted from Battlefield. Like for a long time, and mm. for ages they've done spin-offs and games that weren't really big scale. Yeah, and this is finally this big scale thing. But now they're showing off, like I mentioned before, specialists. Yeah, I don't. I hate. I don't want that. <laughs> I want to be like a, a grunt. Yeah, like in a massive. I want to feel small. In a massive battlefield, I don't want to be like a specialist. Can't think of it, but there's another game I think we were talking about recently mm-hmm. where a realistic war game where you're one of many just normal, normal grunts. Um, they're done. Yeah, I think that was it. The World War One game, and you just you just die immediately. Yeah, and you get shot, and then you just move on. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking about campaigns, I can't think. I have played battlefield games. Mm-hmm. I can't think of a single detail of any battlefield campaign no no, no. that's really weird to me no. like call of duty mm-hmm. some of the campaigns are really good yeah and i can remember them like i mean modern warfare and modern warfare 2 they, yeah i i really enjoyed those campaigns the call of a lot of the call of duty campaigns are Ops. genuinely quite good yeah yeah or at least like surprisingly iconic Mem- yeah memorable <laughs> yeah quotable. i mean cod I mean, clearly, you know, Modern Warfare 1 and 2, in particular, um, that's obviously a bit of nostalgia showing there. Yeah, yeah, it will be, because we were young when we played those. Yes, yeah. And they were like, well, at least for me, my first kind of foray into FPS. Yeah, I mean, also, obviously at the time, especially with Modern well, Warfare. And multiplayer. And, well, and HD. Well, yeah. It was like, Modern Warfare, when it came out, was insane. Yeah. Like, Oh wow, this game looks good. It looks so realistic. Exactly. Yeah. It's so funny going back to those yeah. games now and you realise, whoa. It's like when I used to, oh, I used to play Tomb Raider when I was like five. Yep. I'm like, wow. <laughs> I don't remember it looking like this. I'll be honest with you, I 
I thought Tomb Raider looked like ass, even when I was a kid. Fair. I never thought that game looked good. I always thought that looked jank. Well, someone's enlightened. I played a lot of Tomb Raider with my mum. Like, a lot. Yeah. I, I think I've told you this, but I used to read out the walkthrough, and she used to play the game. You have told me this, actually. That is very cute, though. It's so cute. I just played Tomb Raider on my own and got stuck for, like, a year because I couldn't see a... Uh... A lever on the wall because, as you say, the graphics are ass. Well, when I, I found mean, that lever, I, I think I cried. I was like, I've owned this game for so long, haven't been able to do anything with it because there was a lever here I just couldn't see. Tomb Raider is like, as in, right now, if you were to play Tomb Raider on PlayStation One, mm. extremely bad. Yeah, that's a bad game right now. Like, Especially because that is aged. Horrifically, a much better remake now. Well, that's a different game entirely, though. Really, but you say that—that that is how I found the lever. I played Tomb Raider Anniversary, and then got to the lever. It's like, is there a lever in the original? That's and I went so back and checked, and it funny. was there. Mm. I think the puzzles are far too obtuse. I don't know. The whole thing is just. I think they're pretty acute. They're not. There's. I was just using a different triangle term. There's... I wouldn't call that a triangle term. Oh, it's entirely... It's nothing to do with angles. Okay. Only triangles. Moving on. Triangle means free angle. Okay, I need to... You idiot. (laughs) That was a real moment. Are you opening the window because you're hot? I'm so hot! That's fine. I'm just worried it's going to let more of these horrible, horrible flies in. What horrible flies? There's a fly that won't leave me alone, probably because I stink. That's why I keep swatting at (laughs) the air. You don't stink! That's nice. What are you talking about? It's def- I don't know where it's gone now. You it's, don't stink. It's trying to make me look like a mad but man. But I might but stink if I keep this jumper on. Take it off, take it off. Uh, oh, for our this is a f- yeah, 50th anniversary special. For our audio listeners, Jamie has taken his jumper off and thrown I'm it I'm getting there. nude. Nudie boy. Jack and Jamie get hot and sweaty online. So that was Battlefield news. The PlayStation 5 <laughs> had yeah. a cooler change. Okay, what does that mean? So is it? I only bring this up because... The, okay, cooler it, than what? Here's a, here's a trend, right? It is a cool trend, actually. I quite like it. Is it TikTok? People, no. Is it people putting ham on toilet seats? No. Okay. <laughs> people have gotten way more into just technology. Like, yeah. What, what's in the tech? A lot more. It's Linus tech tips. I mean, that's a huge thing. I, I think it's entirely Linus tech tips. That is a huge thing, <laughs> yes. And Digital Foundry as well, yeah. who are absolute juggernauts at this point. They're so good. I mean, I mean, this information that I'm reading was Digital Foundry video. Fair. Um, Go watch theirs <laughs> instead of this. To no, because this is a too long didn't watch because that's a 20 minute video. This is an hour video. <laughs> <laughs> um, Much better. They um, basically show that. I've gone on a complete... Uh, I mean, we went on too many tangents there and now my brain needs to get back into gear. That's fine. Get back Basically, to Basically, what I mean is... Yeah. People didn't, u- people didn't usually mean... Uh, oh, my God. What is going on? <laughs> people didn't usually care about tech. subtle changes in tech. Yeah. This stuff's been happening all the time. They just wanted For to years. see the big thing of what was actually affecting them. For years and years and years, this was not a big deal. Like, mm. you... You have... Lo- of course, they, they constantly doing iterations of this mm. and I felt like it started with the PS4 I say started I mean obviously it didn't but it got big with the PS4 Yeah. when they changed the cooler on the PS4 Pro mm. and it was significantly quieter Yeah. and that was like oh my god this is actually a huge deal because yeah. the PS4 Pro was really this loud this affects my experience yeah Yeah. Um, then they did the Switch there's been a few Switch iterations one in particular which just boosts the battery significantly like yeah. cool does this- it make my Switch quieter this one yeah. is... It doesn't... They're quite loud sometimes. Are they actually? Well, they are, because they're quite high-pitched. Interesting. I've never really noticed that. Tiny, tiny little fan makes a really high-pitched noise. Fair. Yeah. I'm going to listen out. Carry on. Only when you're docked, though. Mm. It doesn't do it at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that's, that's what I'd imagine. Um, this is a very small thing that doesn't affect anyone, mm. but because it's the first major model number and people are now obsessed with this, mm. the PS5 has a smaller cooler. Mm. And to summarise... The original PlayStation 5 cooler was basically really, really big. Yeah. And they overcompensated because they never... They basically 
they never had a real world stress test, obviously. Yeah. You only get that when you release the thing. Yeah. Millions of people buy it. Yeah. And if it was overheating, mm. you know, that's bad. They've got millions that they need to then sort out. Yeah. So, um, yeah, they overcompensate. And yeah. so now they've scaled it back. It's quite a lot smaller if you see a picture. Like the, the, it's a, I don't know, like a more than a third smaller, I'd say. Mm. It's quite a big difference, quite mm. obvious. And now the PS5, which was ma- is massive because of the cooler, mm. um, doesn't need to be as big. I can imagine they'll some probably in like a year or two they'll probably release like they did with the PS4 Slim. Yeah, they'll probably just do a slim version, which is identical. Yeah, to compensate because now they don't need to be. Yeah, like that. That's just an empty vessel. It is. It's quite a lot of empty space now. You see yeah. the picture. Um, but yeah, there's been loads of tests on it, and there's just no difference at all. Yeah. So it's all good. Good job, Sony. There was a patent for the Nintendo Switch. From Nintendo released a uh, very very cryptic uh, patent. Yeah. They always make sure that their patents are extremely basic partly so that there's no no Leaks. substantial leak yeah it's very basic it seems like they are releasing another controller yeah don't get excited they're not fixing the joy-con it seems to be it has a usb it has a usb c input okay so contenders it's all, it's very very likely going to be a um a classic console controller for Switch. Yeah. Like an N64 controller. Like a, just a standard gamepad. No, like an N64 controller. Yeah. For an N64 classic games to be on the Switch. Yeah. They did it with the SNES and NES. This patent comes along. It could be a new Pro Controller. Mm. It definitely could. It could be like a new improved Pro Controller. Yeah. I feel like it's probably more likely going to be an N64 controller though. Yeah. That just sounds like something they'd do. I reckon it's going to be a PS5 controller. But it's red and blue, like like Switch Joy Cons. That would be really funny, and it's just it looks really knockoff because they had to. But it is the PlayStation Five controller. It just has don't be mistaken the Nintendo logo instead. Yes, either that or it's going to be a Pokeball with a button. Yeah, for the new Pokemon games. Yeah, that's probably the most likely. It, if the the hilarious thing is it that is absolutely a possibility. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, you want you want. Arceus in Legends Arceus, yeah, you got to buy the Pokeball. The way you move your character is by tilting the Pokeball in the direction. That is awful. It's a shortcut to RSI. <laughs> um, yeah. Deathloop starters. Deathloop's just starting on PC. We don't have to talk about that because I want. I'd rather talk about. I want to talk about Valheim actually. Yeah. So, Valheim has had its first major update, which we need to play. I just want to play Valheim in general. I want to play Valheim in general. <laughs> it's basically it's the hot is it Hearth and Home I think it's called, mm. and it's the first of their like make four big updates that they promised they were going to do. Yeah. Obviously, it took them far, far, far longer than they initially said it would. Yeah. But at this point, we should be on like update two or three at least. Yeah. Um, but it's you know fine as a result of being so popular, they they are going to be much more scrutinised for bugs. Definitely. Yeah, I mean, the game really took off. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and it's really take, good. Take your time. Like, yeah. Uh, but this, rush. this update feels... It's not the sort of update that I personally... I'm, I'm up for playing more Valheim. Yeah. But this is not the sort of update where you want to just rush in and play. It's basically... Is it the fly? Flyman. There he is. Loads of quality of life... Yeah. And just nice cosy items been added, basically. Fair. Uh, I will try and summarise the most obvious ones. There's been a weapons rebalance. This uh, the blocking system has been overhauled. Ooh. You can name tamed creatures, which I is like quite significant. That. We um, can have some fun with that. Yeah, they've added they've added new uh, a new light and shadow system to the graphics, which is interesting. Fair. Um, you. Uh, there's like there's like loads obviously the change the the uh, the change notes are patch notes are big like yeah there's loads there's loads of random little little bits odds yeah. and ends oh they they've completely done redone the food system I don't actually know how they've redone it but there's like a whole 
But there's like way more items of food. That's interesting. Which people didn't like. Okay. Because the inventory system, the inventory size is still the same. Okay. So you kill a boar and it will have like like boar leg, boar eye breast or whatever. <laughs> boar boob. Yeah, it drops like five items. Which you don't really want. That's pretty annoying. Yes. I'm interested by the food system being reworked though, because I feel like that was one thing I wasn't massively keen on in the previous iteration of the game. It felt a bit it was a bit weird. A bit weird. Yeah. It was kinda cool once you understood it, but it was it was quite hard to get your head around at first. I kind of wish uh, controversial. I, think, I wish that it was unlinked to your health, maybe, as much as it is. It's quite a huge Then what would be the point in eating? Like stamina? Oh. Yeah. Fair. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I just think it could have been simplified. I know it's fun to try different things, but I feel like it was more complicated than it needed to be. Because I don't really want to... I Maybe that's just me, but in general, I don't want to worry about food in video games. I'm always like, eh. Even like in Breath of the Wild, the only reason I like cook different meals is just to fill out my compendium. Like, I don't care about it's difficult. eating things. It's I just difficult. want to fight and run around. I like the idea of... Same. I do like the idea of food giving you significant bonuses. Yeah, if you get but, like, different buffs and stuff, like, I don't know, fire resistance or whatever. Yeah, but you need it to be sig- significant enough, otherwise you just don't do it. Yeah. If it's just health increase, it's like, well, I'm not going to faff around getting these five different items and smishing them together in no. what's not even, like... A fun mini game. I think I did find the food a little bit stressful. I think overall it improves the game, I'm going to say. Yeah. I don't not want food in the game. It's just if you're going to have food in, make it make it easy for me to understand. Yeah, I can't, I see where you're coming from. I think I think the food system I, would, I think overall I do think it improves the game. Yeah. I think the little things that are frustrating are what makes that game. Yeah. Because they make you want to... You have to work for it. You have, And so when you've done something... I do like that. you achieve achieved something. Mm. It's a big deal. Yeah. But... Definitely. Um, there is... Oh, it says... Over, over t- I like this. Over 10 new things to eat, in brackets, actually 12. 12. Which is so funny. Immediately <laughs> backtrack on that exaggeration. Brilliant. Well, they're not wrong. They should have written over 11. Um, I love this as well. Tamed locks now have a purpose. Brilliant. Poor locks. <laughs> so what do they do? Oh, do they fight? Can you ride them? I haven't got a clue. They have a purpose. Mounts would be cool. Mounts. I actually would mounts probably will come cool. in this game. I think there is actually an update which might have mounts. Oh, there almost certainly will be at some point. I'm pretty sure that was in the patch notes. Yeah. The, the uh, road map even. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I like this as well. Slimy locations and creatures added to the planes. Ooh. They've made the planes a little bit harder. Slimy cre- Wait, the planes are already really hard. Yes. Weirdly so. Yes. I remember we had that. You don't think planes are going to be hard in a game. Yep. Planes in Valheim are mm. very hard. Fun fact, I went on Valheim mm. the other day just to... Just basically to test out the new graphics card. Mm. And I immediately got killed by a mosquito. And I'm talking like five seconds in. Sorry, you said mosquito. Death mosquito. You mean death mosquito. <laughs> so next time we boot up that game, I immediately need to have a rescue <laughs> mission for me, which sucks. <laughs> oh, fun times on the planes. Um, they've added weapons, shields, stuff. Blah, Sorry, blah. you uh, you skipped past new plantable seeds, birch, oak, and onions. Don't talk to me about onions. <laughs> For God's sake, <laughs> Thunderstone. We don't know what that is. It's sold by the trader. The big one, the big big boy, is buildings. They've added like absolutely tons of new building stuff that's the main thing yeah they've just added tons and tons and tons of building stuff oven obliterator for destroying your items cartography table for sharing map data that sounds good mm-hmm. spice rack butcher's table pots and pans that's literally what we asked the whole time yeah we did we wished we could have that yeah, yeah we actually we like exclusively said that exclusively explicitly um a steamy viking hot tub yep that Is it, there's like a throne sick. as well they've added yeah. Like, like a long table a lot of really cool stuff yeah. and improved cooking stations for cooking certain types of meats I like that a lot um, I also like Locke's accessory that you skipped by I didn't see that I want to tame my Locke's and I want to dress them up real pretty <laughs> that is actually quite amazing yeah that um, that all sounds very good 
Yes. I'm excited. I want to play more Valheim. I didn't play nearly enough of it. You played more of it than I did. No, you didn't. You didn't play th that much. No. I, I'm i quite happy with the time I put in. Mm. I didn't finish it. We got up to the... We got up to the fourth boss. We didn't kill the fourth boss. I think I got up to the third. I think we beat the third boss together because I remember saying to you, like, you don't want to miss tonight because we're going to try and do the third boss. No, I think I did miss that. You definitely... You were 100% there for fighting it at one point. Oh, yeah. No, I I, okay, I, okay, I okay, attempted yeah. to fight the third boss, like, three times. Right. Okay, and we okay. could never do it. That, that would be it, then. <laughs> that would be it. Yeah. Um... Uh, <laughs> We, yeah, we, we, so the third one's the zombie slime thing right skeleton yeah. zombie slime boy yeah I never beat him I, we just kind I of... lost him many times and gave up yeah. we kind of stopped because the fourth the fourth boss is we could totally we're pretty close to tackling it yeah Um, but I'm kind of it kind of we kind of just stopped playing it mm. I've put 50 hours into it I'm kind of comfortable to give it like a year. Yeah. Let some more updates come in. And then when I play it again, be like, ooh, like hello. a whole new game. Yeah. 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 That'll be fun. And I'll hopefully they flesh out the, there's the like cobweb area. Mm. And also the. That's coming in, uh, in, in one of the roadmaps, isn't it? It is, but I think it's coming quite far down the line. Fair. Which is a bit sad. It's fine though, it's just a safe space for now because there's no monsters there. We we like abused that for the slime boss big We time. really did, yeah. 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 It'll be good. So uh movie news. Do you have any movie news for us? I can't think of any off the top of my head. Alright. Which is really sad. You're a good pod podcast host, Jack. I should have prepared some. I feel like there has been some movie news, but the only news I can think of this week is um an assortment of Nickelodeon themed video game updates. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, SpongeBob. Yeah. G give us your impressions, Jack. I mean, we don't really have much yet, but it, they're just entirely embracing nostalgia yeah. and throwing every reference from the first three seasons into some new SpongeBob platformer, which it looks like the Battle for Bikini Bottom remake was just preparation for. Wait, what? I thought you were talking about. I thought you were talking about Nickelodeon um, All Star Battle Royale, which, or whatever it's called, which that too has lo had had loads of videos. I was talking about both. Um, Nickelodeon Stars Battle Royale, whatever it's called, Ultimate All Stars. Yeah, um, it looks pretty good. Like surprisingly, there's like, I mean, it just looks like a Smash clone. Yeah, but. Yeah, it's the it's, same thing. They're throwing in just a ridiculous amount of references. The devs, the devs went on record in saying that they love melee. Yeah, but they are that that is very clear. I mean, it, it's there's no denying it's a smash no. clone. The characters fly off the screen. But the thing is, it looks tight. Yeah, it actually looks like a tight fighting game. Yeah, like I don't think it's the very... move sets just look hilarious. Kind of, they're a bit boring. Maybe some of the characters. Like most of them are just punches and kicks. It's not really like. Okay, yeah. I mean, in terms of just straight up the references. Yeah, yeah. Which, in terms of, I don't know, fun playing the video game, isn't a lot. I think it'll be like a simple Smash clone, but like yeah. good. But good. Mm. I think it will be good. I don't know how much it costs. That's what I was going to say. I wouldn't want to pay fifty pound for it. I mean, ultimately, there's twenty characters in that game. Yeah. There's eighty in Smash. Yeah. So. They can't. It it can't be the same price as Smash because it's like they I can, would rather play Smash. They can damn well try. They can definitely. No, try. I don't think they will because I think I thirty think they'll quid. Appreciate that thirty, 30 quid. quid. Exactly what I was gonna say. Yeah, I was. I was not expecting. I was not expecting it to look as good as it does as just no. a fighting game. I no. And no. um, the the videos are really good. The marketing's great. Like the devs. I can't remember the guy's name. But there's one specific guy doing all the videos. It's really good. And he's oh Thaddeus, I think his name is. Not sure. He's um, he's great. He's really funny. Clearly yep. very passionate. Just constantly quoting all different cartoons, and he's clearly like the, I don't know, the Reggie of yep. Nickelodeon. <laughs> no, not the Reggie. You mean the Sakurai? I guess the Sakurai. I feel like, yeah. Because Sakurai does all the videos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
they, they're totally copying the how, Liverpool how, public how, figure. Yeah. Mm. They're totally copying how Nintendo do their, well, Sakurai specifically does his uh, character overview videos. Yeah. They literally are just going for it's it. It's a clone. And they're going in, in depth, though. Everywhere. But the thing is, the thing is, mm. this if this came out on PS2, mm. this would be an unheard of kids game that yeah. it would just be like, whatever. Mm. They are putting effort in. Like, mm. they're going through, like, ridiculous stuff. Like, mm. actually kind of high-level stuff. Yeah. Like, um, what's, what's it called? A tilt. Like, tilt attacks. But that's, that's a big, that's a quite a complicated fighting game. Like, they're yeah. really going into it. Yeah. It's cool. No, it is cool. It's really fun yeah. to see. It's fun when it's just, it just seems like a dumb meme. Mm-hmm. And it's like, oh, they're taking this a bit more seriously. Yep. But still embracing how stupid and ridiculous it is as well. Yeah. It's good stuff. I feel like they can get away with it because it does look quite cheap. Yeah. But they can get away with that if it's fun, which yeah. I think it absolutely will be. Yeah. Um, Especially if you're a big fan of Nickelodeon. I mean, I'm, tem- I mean, I'm tempted to pick it up. I might. Depend on price. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's it's going to be just good nostalgia, stupid fun. I wonder if they'll do a DLC. I bet they will. Maybe. If it's successful, they I mean, will. even like, I don't know how many Spongebob characters are going to be in it, but three. there's no way they're going to... Is it just free? Yeah. So it's just Spongebob, Patrick and Sandy? Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Easy. They can e- do... Squidward. Squidward, Krabs. Mr. Krabs. Plankton. Plankton and Karen is like a dual character, something dumb like that. Oh, that would be so... It would be, like, be like Rob. Yeah. That would be really good. Larry the Lobster. I mean, they don't need, they don't need that many Spongebob No, but I mean, if they Christ. were doing DLC, there's yeah. so many Spongebob I mean, characters they could pick from. What about all the Danny Puff. Phantom characters? Yeah. I was, I was only joking, really. But... Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy. No, but in seriousness, like, all I mean, these cartoons have loads of characters. Let's be honest. parents, there's loads. No, they are. no, you're right. Crocker. That would be a good character, actually. Crocker. That'd be a good character. Do you know how many Fairly Odd Parents characters this is going to be? One. Is it just Timmy? I think it's one. Is it Timmy, but he's assisted by Cosmo and Wanda, like Rosalina? I don't know. Fair. I don't know all the co- all the cartoons that are represented. Some of them are just ones I haven't watched before. I mean, one's like Cat Dog. Yes. You only need Cat Dog. Yeah. Maybe that's just me being not the biggest Cat Dog watcher as a kid, but <laughs> I can see them adding. I can see them adding Squidward. Yeah. And then I think they're done. I think they should never. There's add, no way they're adding more SpongeBob characters. They should never add Squidward, and it should be like Waluigi and Smash. The thing is, though, that's an exact perfect parallel. <laughs> that is so true. That is so true. His special oh. would be like handsome Squidward. Yeah, and he has like gets like his clarinet out, and yeah. that's his projectile move. That's like a note. He, yeah, he could have so many. The only thing that is disappointing about this game but... is the lack of voice acting. Yeah, there's none. That's true. Which is really sad, because those voices are as iconic as the characters. Yeah, I mean, it would be so easy to do as well. Yep. Just have them quote the line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Weird. We've already got the uh, Flying Dutchman level. The stage. Is there a Flying Dutchman? Well, that's Patrick's stage. Is Flying Dutchman's ship? Is it? Yeah. Oh my god! Because there's, there's also a Jellyfish Field level that's as well. SpongeBob's one, I think. That is so funny. And Flying Dutchman just pops up in the background like... Oh, that's so good. Yeah. It's so cool. It's so good. Yeah. They could do a Spongebob fighting game on its own. Oh, yeah. With but, ease. Yeah. With all the characters for her. Yeah. <sighs> that's that. And that's movie news. That's movie news. So, I want to now... Do you want to move on to this... This, uh... <laughs> <laughs> this red note you've written on the screen. Um, I wrote, Warrior Wear Out. Looks good. Yeah. We're not, going to, we're not going to talk about Joke WarioWare. Anything else to add? No. <laughs> there you go. Then that's then that's wrote, wait, we got we got movie news. We Matrix Resurrections. News. Yeah, but I just I I didn't want to I didn't want to skim over WarioWare out looks good. An F. And F. Jamie's written F in his notes. I was not paying respects. I don't know why that's in there. I don't know why you wrote F. Maybe it's short for something. Maybe it's short for, for Matrix Resurrections. What do you think of the trailer? Looks good. Yeah. It's really hard to tell. It I is. love the um, the way they marketed this film. Basically the same way as they marketed The Matrix. Obviously me and Jamie were two when The Matrix came out. <laughs> so, or you might have been three. Um, I'm older. Jamie's an older boy. Um, 
but you know it's very famously at the time it was crazy they released i mean i watched the original trailer the other day because people were talking about it it was just a flash of random images from the matrix obviously it just looks insane and then it's like what is the matrix and then you're taken to this website called like what is the matrix.com and it's all weird and it was all very new at the time because it was 1999 yep. and you know people people they did such a good job at that yeah people were new to this type of marketing yeah. like an arg sort of thing where it's on a website and there's all this different stuff and there's different stuff on the website advertising it but they never really gave away what it was and it was like keanu reeves is he cool? Sorry, though? guys. Is it Keanu? It is Keanu. Oh, my God. Keanu! Do you want to take that? Basically, it was new. Yes. It hadn't really been... A film hadn't been marketed in that way before. Mm-hmm. You know, the internet was very new to many people in general. Um, and people didn't know what this film was or was about. A lot of theories, fun stuff. Kind of, you know, an early predecessor to a lot of what you see these days. I can't really think of another film for me that's done it that well other than cloverfield oh cloverfield good... had really good arg stuff that's a that's a good pick yeah you're right i don't think a film in my like i don't know teenage and... to adult lifetime yeah. has done marketing the story of the matrix lends so well to it exactly it's literally perfect yeah yep. and anyway yeah leading into matrix resurrections they basically did the same thing they brought back what is the matrix.com mm-hmm. had weird adverts um, and when you go on the website, there's a red pill and a blue pill. You click on either one, it gives you a different trailer for The Matrix. And in the trailer, a voice says the current time that you are watching the trailer. And it's really cool and really immersive. One of them has... Didn't know that. I don't know who it is. It's not Lawrence Fishburne, because he's not in this film. It's a Lawrence Fishburne-esque person. Okay. And he's like, you currently think it's twenty one sixteen on blah 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 yeah. like he'll say the current time and then you look like that is the time and it's like read out it's really cool that is so like, cool but what you think is real actually isn't and then it cuts to clips from the matrix resurrections if you click on the other pill it does the opposite where it's like this is real it is currently this time don't worry and then you know it plays yeah. different clips from the film there's apparently a hundred different variations of Trailers of teaser trailers that you can watch on our website. Really? Yeah. I did not know that. Yeah. Like, surely you just watch the whole film. You just cut it together well enough. No. They've obviously little chunks of the trailer that they then released afterwards. <laughs> yeah. What do you think of the trailer? Yeah, the trailer, it's so hard because it does look good and looks fun, but it's really hard to tell with a Matrix movie. It could go either way. I'm cautiously optimistic. I think it's going to be good. And at least it's going to have good action. I mean, the CGI looks good. Because that's kind of the thing with The Matrix. Like, the CGI in the first film was, like, pretty revolutionary. Yes. Some of the stuff they did was crazy. Quite, I mean, it was revolutionary. Well, yeah. It was just straight up the best that had, at that point. It, I think it came out the same year as Fellowship of the Ring. God, was Fellowship of the Ring 99? I feel like it was. Or maybe it was, maybe it was like, a year out. I think it was it the same was year. It was close. Fellowship Very of the Ring close. was around that time. But what a golden age. Yeah. Well, those movies, and there's like, there's like other, there's like another film that I can't think of right now. Oh yeah, I mean, there's oh, loads of uh, Star Wars. The the, pre, the first prequel movie. Menace, yeah. man, yeah, that would have been around then as well. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, yeah, sorry. No, yeah, um, yeah, we'll see. We've seen Keanu doing some crazy stunts over the past couple of years for the film, jumping off of buildings and stuff, which appeared in the trailer. Wait the fuck up, samurai. <laughs> <laughs> we got a matrix to burn one of his worst uh... <laughs> oh man the CGI in that film uh, cyberpunk was really bad yeah it looked like a game Keanu looked like a video game character uh, I am um, here's a take yeah they should they they just dis- oh it's they sh- if they're going to do a matrix 4 mm-hmm. I don't think Neo should be in it at all. Okay. Well, and you're not going to like this one. <laughs> I know. You know what I would rather they did? A new person. It's an entirely separate Matrix. And Ooh. they basically... Uh, and look, uh, this is... this is You're not going to like this. And this is definitely not... This is probably a bad opinion, right? They they basically... I think it would be a better movie... Yeah. If they essentially remake The Matrix. 
keep it canon by saying it's a different matrix. Yeah. But I don't I do not see the appeal in continuing the story that was left off after Resurrections. Um wrong one. What's it called? Matrix Revolutions. Revolutions. That and that was the end of the story. That story is far, far too bloated as it is. Yeah. And if they're adding more to that, it's like there is a caveat though. Sorry, I keep talking. Go for your caveat and then I'll interrupt. The caveat is what appears from the trailer. Mm. At the end of Magic 3, Mm. there's a truce with the robots. Which I barely remember, but yeah. And I believe what happens is they basically... They allow... It's something like they allow... The humans are go back into the Matrix. Yeah. And they're cool with it. Mm. But there's something like... Oh, yeah, that's it. But... They are. They must be given a free choice whether they can leave or not. Okay. That's the. That was the clause. Yeah. And they came to an uneasy alliance, a truce over that. Yeah. So what? What appears to be happening in this trailer is Neo has accepted that he's going back into the Matrix. Mm. He's forgotten about everything. Mm. And I reckon the story is going to be the the robots have now broken the, the truce. Yeah. And gone back on their it word. will essentially be a remake of Matrix One yeah. for like at least the first fifty percent of the movie. Yeah, that's my prediction. Go. I think that's a good prediction. No, I was just gonna say I don't think that's a terrible idea, mm-hmm. but I would use a different word than remake because that sounds like you're gonna just redo the same thing over and over again. Yeah, maybe like a soft reboot. Yeah, that's all what, the rage these days. To be fair, that's that's, that's what, what I was going you meant. for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I don't think that's a terrible idea. Be you know, like you say, it's a different matrix. Yeah. You can do a you can do a completely different story. I mean, it's obviously essentially going to be the same. A person is waking up, sort of thing, but yeah. everything else can be different. You could have someone who's like rich and famous in this world, or mm-hmm. some random homeless conspiracy theorist who no one believes. You could do loads of crazy stuff with it. I think the idea of the matrix is still a fantastic idea, mm. and I they obviously feel the need they can't they don't think they sh- they should remake it mm. fine but i think they really put themselves into a bit of a dead end of the story yeah i need to rewatch the second and third matrix which i never thought i'd say that that's boring yeah. the third, the, no the second one's fine the third one is quite a boring movie i think movie. i remember quite enjoying the second one i remember the third one being boring yeah um, another interesting thing. I'm pretty sure only one Wachowski sister is returning. Interesting. I think only Lily is directing this one, and mm. Lana isn't. Why? Might be completely the wrong way around. I forget. Um, I don't know why, but mm. it's going to be interesting to see if that has like a major effect on the film. I mean, the Wachowskis, yeah. batting average in terms of media in general they've created, isn't the best. No. <laughs> it's always ambitious. Yeah. Give it that. I mean, like Cloud Atlas. Mm. That was pretty fun. <laughs> Oh, Cloud Atlas is it was very ride. ambitious. Very ambitious. Yes. And it had some, some very cool shots and like it doesn't come together as a movie. It exists in a really weird limbo where it's kind of more quoted and relevant than I often expect, <laughs> but also seems to be really forgotten. Yeah. Like when I, I say remember, Cloud I can't remember Atlas, the bloody story. I remember the whole story. Okay. I watched it once. I've watched it a couple of times. Okay just probably to understand it but um i mean yeah i mean if you read the book like it's like well, there's no way to turn this into a film yeah yeah let alone a remotely like short film <laughs> it's not a short film <laughs> that's what i mean yeah um yeah whenever i mention cloud atlas to people even people who don't know much about films everyone yeah. seems to know about that film yeah also, I had Outro oh, no. by M83 in the trailer, and I, that's my favourite song of all time. That's really cute. <laughs> that's very cute. But yeah, we'll see what happens with The Matrix. Yeah. I Also, Lawrence Fishburne isn't returning. Which is really sad. Yeah. wonder why that is. That's kind of more of a big deal than one of the directors not returning. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe not. Um, Does he not die? What, in the third one? I mean, maybe not. I thought he did. He might have died. <laughs> All I remember in that film is a weird club scene in the real world. I thought he died. I want the reveal to be that the real world is the second layer of Matrix. And they have to escape into a third world. You know what? <laughs> and then the film just keeps going Jack, more and more Jack, levels. to be honest, you know yeah. what? There is 
actually a strong possibility that that's that is the case. Happen. Yeah. And I would not be mad at that. That's actually kind of cool. But then they end it. Also, but then that it, is the end. They, they you can't get out of that. But then at that level, it's like. How do we know what is the real world? No, that'll be the ending. So you just keep going forever. No, that's, that'll be the ending. Yeah. The, the assumption would be that it is an infinite, just chain of, which, mm. honestly, real talk. That's a cool idea. That. That's some existential dread if I ever heard of it. That is, kind of. One of those thought experiments where, if you think about it hard enough, given enough time, that probably would be the likelihood of happening. Yeah. If you can make one matrix, why not make millions? <laughs> Yeah, but if if yeah, the only reason why there's an apply in the matrix is because they are constantly rebooting the matrix. Yeah. So there's never going to be a technological, you know, they're never going to have the robot uprising happen in the matrix because they'll just reboot the matrix and it won't happen. Pretty scary thoughts. Isn't this isn't it canon in the matrix that the go. reason they exist this is kind of a random tangent the reason they exist in 1999 within the matrix is because that was like the last golden age of humanity yeah. and then from then on everything was just terrible yeah i always find it really fascinating that they made that film and then two years later 9 11 happened and in a lot of ways things did get pretty horrible in america yeah that's that always seems kind of weird to me I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that 1999 was the last golden age. I'm generally of the belief that, on the whole, let's say like decade by decade, mm-hmm. you know, from the past at least centuries, yep. life generally gets better for the average person. That's just that's just definitely true. Yeah. Yeah. But the obviously not for everyone. No, I would say that it depends also what your definition of golden age is. Yeah, because if oh, we're talking about I'm talking about Civ well if you're talking about Civ then we'd not be in a golden age right now not enough we, we would be in a golden age during the 1900s I would, I would say that we are living if you're talking about just the health of people on average and just mental Happiness. and physical yeah probably the best it's ever been ever yeah if we're talking about well, the world is like technological improvements. I mean, obviously we're still going up, but compared to the ni- in the 1900s, it's wild, a wild ride. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I'm pretty sure the world is is consistently be getting more and more at peace over time. Like, there's less and less wars every single year. Yeah, yeah. Pretty sure that's fact. I think it is fact. Nice. Um, we're kind of en- exiting our remit at the moment. We we this is not our speciality. Generally, talk about slightest. movies. <laughs> so. There, there was this little game that did a stress test today. Oh yeah, uh, popping into this bit of news. Called yeah. Age of Empires Four. Yeah, and it was alright. I had a little peek in earlier. You playing it? It was okay. Look, look fun. There, ramped up the voice acting. You said. Base his his. Let's have a look at that time. What 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 sort of what sort of. Yeah, we haven't got too long, but I'll talk about it a little bit. Okay, um, we've got time. There's nothing about it, that, from what I can tell, mm-hmm. that couldn't have been done 15 years ago. Okay. <laughs> Not the best review I've ever heard. Like, As in, really, they're, like, they've made improvements, mm. but it doesn't feel like, oh yeah, this is this is a modern RTS that could only be made in the 2020s yeah it doesn't feel like that yeah it's just a prettier looking Age of Empires 2 um which is annoying because I I absolutely adore RTS games like that yeah and they really need to have a comeback because they died out big time and they really have quite honestly I don't actually mind too much if they do if they, if, this is an important release and it's good mm. but I do think that part of the reason why those games died out was because they were not innovating at all Yeah, and this is not innovating Yeah, it is definitely a fun game though I really really hope it's successful because mm. it is a good game Yeah, for sure mm. a good RTS it's just uh, not what you would expect from in terms of where we are now in games Yeah, but 
You could probably say that across the whole industry, though. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah, I mean, all the best RTS games I've played in recent years have just been random little indie games. I can't think of the yeah. last time a really big mainstream AAA RTS came out. Grey Goo. Yeah. It's only one I can think of. I don't even know what that is. Came out years ago. It's a really cool idea. Cool. Is it to do with Grey Goo? Yeah, it actually was. Um, would you believe? I do. Oh, Grey Goo was really good. <laughs> Should but, play that on the channel. But this is this is what needs to happen, right? Yeah. Asymmetric gameplay. Mm. We need... Grey Goo was brilliant because all the three factions were totally different. Yeah. One of them were, were the Grey Goo. Mm. And they were basically just this mobile, crazy goo. There's just a mobile base that was constantly moving around the map. Mm, okay. And it's just weird. And then... That sounds very different. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. It was very cool. Uh, but it's, very nice. Unfortunately, it just wasn't a very good game. Oh. It was, like, fine. Yeah. Cool concept, poor execution. Fair. Um... I don't have too much to say about Age of Empires. I mean, that's the thing with RTS is it's just, like you say, they need to innovate because what more can you do with a standard RTS? It's just going to be the same as every other RTS that's come out. It needs to be something different. <sighs> what What I would like is, which Age of Empires 4 could do this, mm. is to have a solid base and just update and add DLC and stuff. I, yeah. I think like, Combine and Conquers, Con Conquers, that's not a game. Command and Conquer. Yeah. Um, Command and Conquer. Bad Fur about, Day. Yeah, I was talking about the garden version. Um, it is really, really good. And mm. honestly, CNC3, all that needs is like a modern lick of paint. Mm. And they could probably re-release that. And it's still a really fun game. Yeah. I just want it to be supported and just not have these games just die. Mm. And then not release them for like another 10 years. I want us Tim Curry... Is that Red Alert? It, yeah, it must be. It must be Red Alert. They should make more Red Alert games and get yeah. Tim Curry back. Well, Command Con the last Command Con game that came out was a mobile game, and it was terrible. It's really sad. Like Dawn of War. I didn't like the direction they took that in. No. Well, Command Con 4 tried to take the series in a new direction, mm. and it was a, it was a, a terrible, terrible game. Mm. But instead of saying, oh, yeah, that didn't work, we'll go back to doing more of what was good, they just Double canned down. it. They, they, oh. they got rid of it. Oh. They just they, There wasn't another Command & Conquer game until there was still one. That was the last one. It came out years ago, like yeah. many, many, many years ago. Here we are telling RTS developers to innovate. Every time they try it, we shit all over them. No, it's not that. It's just they just gave up immediately. Yeah. That's like, oh. They keep trying. And I said, just, they probably just run out of money. Do like their games. It's EA. Oh. Yeah, they definitely. I'm yeah, definitely think... won't give them any more money after it, that. It then. is tricky. Oh, I just want more ITSs. I'm going to play Age of Empires 4. It's really fun. I can't wait. Yeah, keep going for it. I'm not going to complain Test about that stress. it. stress. The final thing that I want to talk about mm -hmm. is a game we played today. Is it called Delta Room by any chance? That's the one. Yeah. Delta Rune Chapter 2 came out today. Yeah. Jack, you played Delta 1 Chapter 1 today. I played Delta 1 Chapter 1. What was your impressions of Delta Rune Chapter 1? Delta 1 Chapter Rune. It was a lot of fun. Yeah? Yeah. I It made me want to play Undertale all the way through. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's just a fun game. Yeah. Really stupid humour. A lot of spooky little moments. Fun characters. And I like what he did with the combat system yeah kept it simple added a little bit mm. added as much as needed to be added in my opinion because mm -hmm. I don't think it needs to be over complicated it's part of the appeal of Undertale at least for me the appeal of Undertale is I could make a game like this <laughs> yeah yeah the humour and yeah. and genuinely great characters yeah yeah Can, cannot stress that enough mm. like the bit and There's cool, a, where cool that deer, story that allows for theory crafting. And that. The deer with her dad in the bed, in the hospital bed, that random optional scene. Mm. It was great. Such a little moment didn't need to be added in. Like, oh, and their facial expressions in the window yeah. are actually so good. It's All really well done. All the facial expressions are really good. Some yeah. of them are terrifying. Yeah. 
Yeah, the animations in, in Dorian <laughs> seemed really cool compared to Undertale. Oh, Big Leap Up. Big Leap. I thought you were going to say Big Leap. I did not say that. Big Leap Up. <laughs> Big Leap Up. Yeah, not that it needs amazing animations or anything. I mean, I was going to say it's just pixel art, but I feel like that's that's unfair. Pixel art can have really good animations. Yeah. Good going. Yeah. As someone who's not a, a huge Undertale fan like you yeah, are, yeah. I very much enjoyed it. And, yeah, like I say, it made me want to go back and play Undertale a few times. I like I like the story. I like the weird meta stuff. It's a lot of fun. Del- uh, Delta Ruin is a long game. Mm. Um, if there's going to be seven chapters... It's going to be big. And if they're all about three or four hours long each... Yeah. That's way longer than Undertale 1. Google told Jamie that the first chapter of Deltarune was 40 minutes long to complete. I couldn't remember. It took us about four hours. <laughs> when I first played it, because I, I knew it was only chapter one, I remember when it finished, I was like, oh, that's so short. But because I was comparing it to Undertale. Yeah. But Undertale's not that much. It's like not that much longer. Yeah. It's like seven hours long. Yeah. So I don't know what I was going to I don't know what you were head. thinking. <laughs> yeah, it was really cool, though. Uh, it, it makes me want to get into I know this sounds like a uh, a brave thing to say but it makes me want to, want to get into the fan base and, and see some, some theories and stuff I think you're safe at this point yeah that kind of hype has massively died down yeah 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 I just I, I, I like that, that aspect mm. of games where you can I don't know it's like the ARG thing with the Matrix you can really get into it and, and dive in well the fact that one of the seemingly major characters in Deltarune can be found in Undertale by editing some files, and it's yeah. very much intentionally for that. Yeah. Oh, um, oh, I could, I that could be like a, a whole. I'm not going to do that because there's there's like a million videos on Undertale on YouTube. Yeah. I'll talk to them about that in private. Yeah. Is there anything else you want to add to this podcast? Not particularly. I think we covered the bases. Yeah. Happy fiftieth. <sighs> I can't believe. It has not been 50 weeks of Sandbox. It's been Three about years. 150 weeks of Sandbox. Should we recreate the uh, the meme with Arnold Schwarzenegger and Carl Weathers? They're gone. And they go, Roar! and then it zooms in on their burly muscles. Openly Beads that have big muscles confirmed. Signing out. <laughs>